Mr. Moidas, uh, the Horizon 2020 program, the 80 billion euro program uh, for research and innovation that you superintend, uh, it's 15 months old. How is it going? What lessons have you learned? Thank you so much, uh, Richard, first of all, for the opportunity uh, to be here with you and uh, actually to go through uh, the Horizon 2020, which is really the biggest program in the world for science, research and innovation. The lessons that we actually uh, are having and the feedback, it's that we are up to a great start. Uh, really, uh, so far, uh, we got more than 45,000, really. 45,000 <laughs> 45, applications? 000 applications. And so that uh, really, uh, it's quite unbelievable that uh, the program is attracting the best of the best. I think that's more than in the past, right? Absolutely. I yeah. mean, I'll just to give you an idea, it's basically we're getting seven times the budget uh, in terms of yeah. really uh, looking at it, which, uh, which is actually good and bad is good because we're going to get the best of the best. It's actually not as good because we really will have a problem actually on the success rate because we have right. too many people. And what so, is that? <clears throat> what is that, the success rate? How is it going? Look, I think the success rate is actually going down uh, because really we have much more people. So it's a mathematical uh, problem. Right. Uh, but we are looking, looking at ways of looking at it in uh, looking at a two-phase process where we can actually look at the number number of people that are looking at a certain proposal, eventually getting to a higher success rate by putting in different phases so people don't have to go through the whole process and get to the end and unfortunately don't get it. So I think that one, Horizon 2020 is about excellence. So excellence is difficult. And so it's normal that the success rate is not high. I mean, the success rate is limited to the best of the what best. Is it? Really, uh, nowadays, I mean, there's it varies. I mean, the the you're going around 14 percent, 15 percent, 14 percent, 15 percent, depending on the countries on average. Yeah. So we are we have to look at different countries, and some countries have much better than others, as you and, know, and because I think it was, there's a divide. What, 23 percent or something, or yes, like in the yes, old yes, FP7. in the old in the old. So it's going down, but it's going down because really. Um, uh, we are getting around the world the beacon of the excellence in the world. And I think that's, right. that's extremely good. People, it's not just Europe, it's uh, uh, the United States, is Asia, is different people around uh, the globe that want to be part of this program. And so we are very privileged because there's not a lot of programs like these. And, and so it's, uh, it's, I think we should look at it in the positive way and not in a negative way. But of course we have to work on it because people spend time, they spend hours, they spend money to go on to this proposals and so we have to actually probably look at it be uh, look, look at it in uh, more carefully in these two different phases so people uh, don't invest so much time and then they don't get it how would you do that though I mean what are the po options look the option <coughs> is that you have different phases of selection and so uh, more, more when than people, two? we could have but I'm um, oh, not okay. announcing anything we're looking at or looking at it and okay. so people will when they have uh, basically they are going and they're not prepared or uh, they're not will have any chance to do it, we should tell them earlier. I think that's the, the point. But we cannot change the package, really. I yeah. mean, I think it's what it is. And so we have to live with what we have. Is there, uh, I know, for instance, the European Research Council in the past had done things like have a rule that if you fail, do really badly on the first application, then you have to wait a year. To try again, have you, have you thought about anything like that? No, we're like thinking that? about different things. I think we, the the one, I mean, more than that, we're thinking about how can we actually be in a more close connection with the structural funds, for instance, and uh -huh. see because you have in because that's even more money. That's even more money. Yeah. You have 100 billion in the structural funds, and you have 80 billion on Horizon 2020, and so. Really what we want is eventually to work together with my colleague Corina Creto and be able that if a call goes and people that are extremely good but they couldn't get it with Horizon 2020, that they can eventually go to the structural funds with a stamp of excellence because going through the process of Horizon 2020 uh -huh. is already a stamp of excellence. So we are working on ways of actually getting the most out of it because today you have the structural funds, 100 billion. You have the Horizon 2020, 80 billion. And you have basically the new Juncker plan, uh, which will be 
leverage uh, uh, as a um, total amount of 300 and something billion. So we have different instruments, and I think that those instruments are excellent news for science and for innovation, because it's not just one. We have to count all these instruments. But for that, you need, I need, we all need political leadership for those instruments to be in connection. And, and that's why I have been also very involved in the Juncker plan, because I think it's part of us This is the working. investment plan, uh, 315 billion. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. OK, but there's a, that's an interesting, the, the structural fund issue is, is interesting. On the, you mentioned the pol political leadership, because the member states have usually been very unwilling to let, to, to, you know, they want to control the money. So how do you get around that problem? Are they willing to go along with this idea? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, uh, I, I think there's no magic about it. I think there's mm. just a way of us commission to work together. Uh, and I think that this more political commission that President Juncker wants uh, is actually part of that plan and that we can have not, we cannot oblige countries to do, th uh, to do uh, actually measures or other things. We, ha we have to give them the right incentives to do so. And I think the right incentive here that I'm talking about is, for instance, to say, look, we have this project that went through the Horizon 2020 filter, which is extremely tough, and here you go. You have a stamp of excellence, right. really. And so this is very good. I mean, yeah, I understand. up to you. Look, you are the member state, you have it there, but you have money for these uh, type of projects and you could actually. So I think that it's about incentives and not obligations. I see. Because we cannot really oblige people to do things that they do not want to do, right. but we can actually give them the right incentives and that's what we're working on. Okay, but a related question though is I've heard from, uh, we've been hearing from many large companies that normally go into FP7 that, oh my goodness, the success rate is so difficult. Uh, uh, will we, we won't bother to continue. I mean, is this a, an issue, do you think, that, uh, you know, specifically corporate participation? Look, I think that what we see is that corporate uh, participation is going up. And I think that's going a up. very good, uh, going yeah. up. And, uh, and we look, I mean, at the, the numbers that I have basically tell us that in the applications of Horizon 2020, we are up to 35% of what I would call private sector, really. Uh -huh. And I think that's, uh, that's good news. We have to do more of it, and we have to be more on board with companies and co the corporate sector for them to get more involved. But I think we are heading in the right direction. And I think that the fact that we have more than 8.6 billion for small and medium enterprises is really good news. And so, really, I think that we have created the instruments that actually allow uh, the corporate sector to come. I've just uh, met the other day with uh, business people from Germany and I was just listening to them what were the hurdles, what are the problems and what are the feedback. And they all agree that Horizon 2020 is much more simple, it's less bureaucratic. Uh, and so we will uh, have more feedback, we will look at it because being, or as you know, simplification is an ongoing process. But uh, really, uh, I think that it's all about simplifying, getting it simpler for companies to be part of the game. And so we will keep on that track. We okay. will keep on that so track. we've talked about the success rates, the simplification. Are there any lessons, though, that you've, beyond that, that you've learned, th changes that might you're thinking about in the program? Look, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's too soon to, to look at uh, detailed changes that we can actually do in the future because we have we know we have the midterm review mm -hmm. so uh, one of the things we've we've done we've sent letters for instance to business people and CEOs asking them what actually impairs you from doing more innovation in Europe because this is not just about horizon 2020 is about are the structural reforms there right are right. the things that they need to be and have their companies in Europe there. And so I think that my role as a commissioner for research, science and innovation is actually broader than Horizon 2020. And it's more about how we focus actually on the results. I mean, I sometimes give as an example that the UK invests around one and a half percent in research and development. And Portugal, the country where I come from, also invests one and a half percent in research and development. But the results are extremely different. I mean, we all agree. I yeah. mean, uh, the UK is really the top of the top in terms of research and science. Well, the ranking so of universities. How, how, yeah. What's the framework? What are the framework conditions that make that some countries with the same level of investment have 
better results. And I think that's something that is more of a cross board, a board uh, really, uh, I would say, responsibility, political responsibility, to actually make sure that we create that ecosystem and uh, the conditions for research and innovation to thrive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner. You're very welcome.